Hi everyone, this is Yelena Sebasic with Massey Consulting. Um, thanks for joining our October Cloud Bites. Um, it is exactly 2 o'clock, but I might give 30 more seconds to see if anybody else joins. So if you all can be patient and just wait a little bit longer. And then we'll get started. I hope everyone is having a great day today. It's almost Friday tomorrow, so that's exciting. And I don't see anybody else signing on, so if they do, they're welcome. But um, I guess we'll just go ahead and get started. So again, this is Sage Intact Cloud Bytes for our October. Um, the topic for today is AP and AR reconciliation. So best practices to keep ledgers clean. And um, your presenter today will be Barbara Race. And um, I'll just go ahead and hand over the floor to her. So Barbara, if you want to get started. Okay, thanks Yelena. Um, good afternoon everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, again, we're doing the AP and AR reconciliations with for today's Cloud Bytes. Um, Just so you know, if you have questions, please use this chat session. Um, Yelena will be monitoring that, so any questions you have, you can go ahead and put into the chat window in the control panel, and we hope you enjoy today's presentation. I'm going to, Massey Consulting, just give you a little brief um, background on Massey Consulting. We were founded in 2002, comprised of CPAs and accountants. We have numerous technical cert certifications. Um, Sage Intac Premier Partners since 2013, Sage Intac Presidents Club 2014, 2015, and 2017, Microsoft Goal Partner for Dynamics GP. They're ranked in the top 300 small businesses in Southeast USA and contributors to N NCACPA blog and others. And then just a brief a brief interview introduction on me. I'm an Intact consultant. I have a BS in accounting. I was an Intact user since 2012. Um, I've done an Adaptive Insights implementation, and I've been a guest speaker at events. So to start with our topic today, at the end of today's session, you'll understand what a reconciliation is and how to perform one, how to avoid the common pitfalls preventing a common scenario, and reconciliation checklist. So first, what is a reconciliation? It's performed at the end of a period to verify the detailed total of the subledger compared to the general ledger. And then there's an example of our general ledger and our accounts payable ledger. The reconciliation steps. Um, AR or AP reconciliation and the steps that you'll take. You'll run your general ledger report to a date. You'll run the vendor or customer agent report month to date and an AR, AP and AR ledger report month to dates. So once you run all the reports you want to make sure that your GL account balance equals your sub ledger balance and that your um, aging reports will equal your sub ledger balance. But we all know that's in a perfect world. So what are some of the reconciliation steps we can take when our GL account balance does not equal our subledger balance? Our goal is to find the point where the report balance where the report balanced. You want to confirm balances at your go live date and then jump forward in time either through months or years as necessary to find where that where your final report was balanced. The worst case, the two balances never agree. Um, you need to ask the client to confirm which balance is correct and adjust the beginning balance entry or review open APAR activity. If the balance is agreed at one point, what can you do? You can quantify the differences, run the general ledger report in detail to un uncover transactions that could be causing the differences. Common causes and situations to avoid. Um, 
your aging periods. You want to always verify that your invoices and bills are showing up in more, you want to make sure that your invoices and bills are showing up in more than, that they're not showing up in more than one period. So with our example below, we can see that we have the same amount showing up in the two different periods. And that is caused because our periods are not set up right for the aging. So transactions, your aging periods, you always check your aging periods. Transactions you know are in the system are not showing on the aging. Again, check your aging periods. So in this instance, the very first example, we can see that we have nothing showing up in the aging at all for our um, report. But when we have the correct periods in the system, we show that there is aging. So one of the things with INTAC, what you want to make sure is that when you have your aging periods, that you have an open-ended period in your beginning and an open ending at the end. So if you notice, our very first um, aging is zero, so it's blank to zero, and then our final aging is 91 to blank, which means 91 to infinity. So those are some of the pitfalls that you run into if your agings are not set correctly. So aging periods. Ensure aging periods are set up correctly. Ensure there are no gaps and that the periods do not overlap. And make sure your ranges are open on both ends. And that's the example we just had in our prior one. So you can see that the minimum range is blank to zero for the first. And at the end, we have the 121 to infinity. Some, not comparing apples to apples can cause other problems. If you're using your AP or AR account alternatives, all accounts will be included in aging reports by default. Be sure all AP, AR accounts are included in the GL report when comparing to the aging reports. If you have, con you can always create a memorized GL report to ensure consistency in this instance. So you want to set up a memorized report for the general ledger accounts if using alternative accounts and then um, run it for your reporting periods. So you're going to create a, um, a report, put in the account ranges that you need, and then memorize that report so you can run it every month. Not comparing apples to apples, your general ledger reports based on GL posting, run your GL reports based on GL posting dates. AR, AP, aging reports can be run, can be run based on the bill, invoice date, due date, GL posting date. So if you're choosing a different aging report um, period, you may not have, you will not have apples to apples. So make sure that you always are doing the same periods. So what the recommendation is to run your aging reports, your AP ledger reports based on GL posting dates. So you have the apples to apples comparison. Some other problems that could happen is you have direct posting uh, to AP, AR, GL accounts. You may not have a link on, you may no link on the date linking source stock to the transaction. All other um, activity posted from AP and CD, which is your AP journals and your cash disbursement journals. And make sure your memo descriptions is uniform like other lines. So when you're looking at your GL detail, make sure that the information you're seeing is that the information that's posting to your accounts payable is coming from the AP journal or the cash disbursement journal. If you see any other type of journal in there, that's a clue that you probably have a problem. So you can see in this example, we have a general journal that was posted directly to the, um, gen the AP account on the general ledger. You can see also that our memo and description is not the same as the others where we have when the memo and description comes from an AP journal, it says bill in the description or if it's from a cash disbursement, it's saying AP payment. You may want to disallow direct posting to your APARGL accounts and how you can do that is have one point of access for APAR activity using smart rules. So you could set up a smart rule 
and then if anyone tries to post directly to the general ledger they will get the error shown below so below are some situations which will cause the GL to be out of balance um, in accounts payable the bill payment date prior to a bill date for AR a payment received prior to the invoice date If a transaction has not been reversed, you need to set the void date to the date of the transaction, either the payment or the receipt, and then record your new transaction using the correct date if you have an error that you're correcting. Payment reversed before the transaction date. So you have an AP bill entered in the future. For example, someone um, keyed in April 1st, 2106, and then you have a payment date of April 5th, 2015, but you reverse the payment and the invoice, re the payment and invoice were reversed on April 20th, 2016. So you'll have a mismatch there due to the bill being entered in the future. Oops, sorry. So prevent transactions from being posted in the future, and you do that by updating your AP or AR config to disallow posting in the future periods. So if you went into your configuration, you can check on don't allow transactions to be created if they have a future period. Okay, and then the other thing that could cause um, mismatches is leaving the display reversals as historical transactions unchecked. And that again is in the configurations. So for example, if you had a bill entered in February and then a bill paid in March, and you you in April had the bill and payment reversed, when you were when you go back to do a vendor aging as of February, nothing is going to show up there. But if you check the box to display um, reversals as historical transactions in your um, configuration, then when you run your aging back to February, you will see that this that invoice will pop into the screen. Okay, and then another clue is applying credits to a multi-entity shared environment. So credits are entered at the top level and not restricted by the entity. When you do that, at the system, how it applies the credits is based on a percentage split of the line items, and it does not consider location when applying. So in our example, we have two different locations noted. So when we apply our credit, it's going to take a percentage and apply that percentage to each of the locations. But if the credit was for a specific location, you can restrict the credit by entity by going to the configure multi-entity um, screen and go down and check the box limit AP credits to the entity owners. So then that information will be applied, the credit will be applied as a waterfall on that entity only. So our reconciliation checklist, so some things to remember is always make sure your aging periods do not overlap. Verify display reversals as historical transactions. Make sure that is checked. Confirm that the APAR aging reports is run based on GL posting date. Ensure the GL report, report includes all APAR accounts. Ensure any sub-ledger reports run include one-time vendor customers. Check for transactions posted directly to AP and AR on your general ledger. You want to quantify the difference between the two reports. Pinpoint the period in which the difference first surfaces. Pre-reversals may be corrected by matching the reversals to the transaction. And post reversals, it depends, but may require engineering assistance if there's any kind of error there. And at this time, I'm going to open it up for questions. All right, thank you, Barbara. Um, the chat box to the right is open, so if anybody <clears throat> has any questions for Barbara, please type it up or feel free to ask, and we'll give everybody a couple minutes. 
Okay, Barbara, I'm not seeing anything. Oh, um, yes, so can we get a copy of the slides? Is that possible? Yes, you're going to post them out there, are you not, Yelena? Um, yes, so maybe up, they should be up tomorrow. Um, I will either put them on social media or, yeah, we'll get them posted tomorrow. <clears throat> And if you can't get access to them, please let us know and we'll be happy to send you the slides. Okay. Um, and then also, uh, the question is, we are new to Intact. Can we get a list of the points you made so that our setup is correct? Yes. We will discuss those if you're new to Intact when we go through your questionnaires and when we walk through your setup. We'll make sure that those items that we talked about are checked on the configuration. Okay. Um, and then again, like I said, I will try and get that copy up um, somewhere, and if not, then we can personally email that to you. So, not a problem. And then, does anybody have any more questions? I'm not seeing anything else. Okay, and just a reminder, our next Cloud Byte session is going to be Managing Budgets in Intact, and that's going to be on November 16th at 2 p.m. Okay, I think we're good, Barbara. Um, okay. So thank you, everybody, for coming, and um, we hope you attend the next one. Thank you.